You know, in listening uh, to Kirk, I couldn't help but, uh, but thinking of what I understand is a Chinese saying that says that if you're working on an issue that will be resolved during your lifetime, you're not working on a good enough issue. <laughs> and, and it seems to me that Rosenberg, from the very beginning, has been working on tough social issues that, that will go on in different contexts, uh, probably for the rest of, of civilization, but which very much needs individuals and organizations working at it day in and day out. <coughs> As Kirk indicated, I joined uh, the, the, the foundation, Rosenberg Foundation, in 1979. And I must say, incidentally, I was interested in how the care that they took in selecting members. Uh, I, was, I, I had a long discussion with one or two or three, I forget, of the members before I knew they were considering me to, 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 be, to be a member. And apparently, I passed the grade because then, then I was invited to, to, to be a member. But they really uh, did, did take care. But when I did join the foundation, I really did run in, into, and obviously, I was impressed from, from what folk told me about it, so I accepted the invitation. Uh, and getting there, it really was and is an organization that has been a, a, at the cutting edge of leadership within the philanthropic uh, world itself, uh, taking on issues that other, that other uh, foundations don't take on and encouraging them to do so. And they've been doing it, as Kirk indicated, since, since the very beginning. Uh, it was just a young uh, corporation wh when it threw itself into the issue of the Japanese internment, trying to protect Japanese and Japanese uh, Americans. And, and Kirk once told me that very early on, the, the, those who founded the, the foundation had earned their money from, from produce coming from the San Joaquin Valley. Maybe that was the interest that, that Rosenberg has always had, not only in the Bay Area, but in the San Joaquin uh, in the San Joaquin Valley. But Kirk told me that actually, in going through the records, he found that, that Rosenberg had sponsored some bilingual programs for the schools very early on. Now that's really uh, looking, looking forward, it, se it seems to me. And so indeed, while I was, while I was there, uh, I found that uh, Rosenberg indeed did take, did, did take risks uh, in protecting those who were the least enfranchised in, in, in our society, and particularly those who were suffering from bad public policy that made him disenfranchised because Rosenberg has always emphasized the, the, the importance of changing public policy for the benefit of those who don't have the political power uh, to, to, protect, to protect themselves. Um, and, and then when I got there too, uh, I found diversity on the board, which was not that common in those days in, in foundations. I found f uh, board members who were young, board members who were not so young, board members who had been on the board for a long time, relatively new board members. Uh, I found racial and ethnic diversity. Uh, Latinos were not, were not much invited to be on foundations, but actually when I got there, I was told, I think I may have known that Herman Gallegos had been on for, for several years before I was asked uh, to, to be uh, on, on the foundation. And then after my being there, of course, Alberto Moreno and, and, and Hugo Morales ha have joined in. Incidentally, I didn't realize I was the first Latino to be, to be president of, of, of the board. Uh, 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 my question was, what happened to Herman? He should have. <laughs> Oh, that's it. He went to a big foundation, Rockefeller. So, so he left before he, 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 he left before he could be, he could reach the point of being of being pre president. Uh, when I was there, as indicated uh, by Kirk, uh, the Rosenberg Foundation takes time every few years to reevaluate its its it, where its energy is going to go and where the resources, at least a principal part of those resources, are going to go. And indeed, I was thinking about about immigration. And as, it, as Kirk indicated, I had been on, on that commission, made recommendations to, 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 to the president and then to Congress uh, about the amnesty program. Uh, and the amnesty program turned out to be far more successful than I had thought it would be because we had studied on that commission amnesty programs throughout the world and many of them had not been very successful. The reason it was successful, I think, is that the INS had, had the good sense to distribute its authority to community groups to do the outreach and do, and do the, um, 
intake for those who, who were going to come forward and ask for amnesty. And the community uh, folk had confidence in those community groups, though not much in INS. But they did come forward, that, therefore, in, 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 huge, in huge numbers. They needed resources. And, and Rosenberg, un understanding the, the issues that were, that were pressing and having some resources, uh, and, I know, and I got a note indicating that during that time, um, there were, I, th I think, 118 grants, uh, uh, totaling $2 million, to 59 different organizations. That is, it's, it's sort of like a class action. If you win a class action, you, real, you feel really good, but if it doesn't get, get enforced, it doesn't mean anything. So, so we had, I, I thought, a good practice here, but if it hadn't been enforced, then it wouldn't have meant much. And it meant a lot because Rosenberg was there uh, to help. Uh, and then, and then we had the proposition that hopefully many have forgotten about, Proposition 187, uh, that, that uh, prohibited uh, public funds to be ex uh, expended, uh, any public service really, for, for, for the undocumented. Uh, and it was the sense of many of us that it was unconstitutional. And Rosenberg indeed, again, spent uh, something like over a million dollars in helping fund the litigation from whence uh, came about the demise of, of Proposition 187. Uh, so, 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 so Rosenberg has been involved, as I say, since the very beginning with those tough and, and, and greatly beneficial uh, uh, social battles. Um, so what do we expect for the next 25 years? I think that we can expect that Rosenberg, as it has in the past, will do everything it can to make the reality of America a bit closer to its ideals. Thank you very much.